there's no there's no cessation of experience. Um, it just continues in a, in other forms. But you, as a person, don't get to experience that continuity. What there's no particular person that it is continuous. It's just that subjectivity is never a, never absent for itself in all these different forms. So, Elijah, in 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 Harris's podcast, he he says, and this is an interesting way to express it. He says there's something eternal. There's a kind of a etern eternality, uh, eternal about the, about consciousness. So that was interesting, a way to put it that way. Something internal. Eternal. Eternal, oh, okay. Yeah, not internal, but eternal. Oh, yeah. In other okay. words, timeless or a transcending time. Uh, and te uh, Ted, you put, uh, you put this in a really nice way. You said it's kind of like a time machine. It, yes, unconsciousness is a proverbial time machine. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. That was really cool. Um, but I... I just got uh, NL Seth's new book about consciousness being you. Do you, you guys know about Seth, NL Seth? He's a neuroscientist and researcher, researcher in consciousness. Anyway, he's a you know really interesting, uh, very smart guy uh, doing great work on consciousness. Um, but uh, he introduced in his first chapter, I'll, I'll read this to you because this is, this is just out, just out, okay? Um, <clears throat> so naturally, I'm, you know, I'm reading through it, da, 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 okay. <clears throat> Where is it? This is in the prologue, the last page of the prologue. <clears throat> I'll, I'll read you a bit of it. <clears throat> um, this is page eight and nine. He says, <clears throat> excuse me, our conscious experiences are part of nature, just as our bodies are, <clears throat> just as our world is. And when life ends, Consciousness will end too. When I think about this, I am transported back to my experience, my non-experience of anesthesia, to its oblivion, perhaps comforting, but oblivion nonetheless. The novelist Julian Barnes in his meditation on mortality puts it perfectly. When the end of consciousness comes, there is nothing, really nothing to be frightened of. So <clears throat> there he is, I think, uh, he's talking about, he says, my non-experience. Mm -hmm. uh, experience so, of no experience, as right. you put it. Yeah, yeah. So, and he talks about it as oblivion. And, and this is interesting, perhaps comforting. So <clears throat> anyway, I... Uh, you know, there he says there's nothing to look forward to. Well, I mean, he's being, he's kind of playing playing on this. Uh, nothing to be frightened of. Um, on the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> but and, and this this brings up a point that that Ted you've you've emphasized, and I, I get at it a little bit in my paper, but you've made a, a, a more definite point of it, which is that the fact that we don't have nothingness to look forward to is actually kind itself is a, a bit scary because we can't look forward to oblivion right it's not and this is this is what you see all those headstones with rest and peace on them now what is that but looking forward to an experience of non-experience where you get a rest you get a rest a respite from from being conscious right you're resting there in a nice state of unconsciousness. <laughs> yeah, Richard Dawkins recently said in a book review of uh, Katie Englehart's uh, book, The Inevitable, um, he said that death would be uh, a transition to our peaceful oblivion. It sounds nice, but <laughs> yeah. Right. <clears throat> so it is something that you could probably, you know, possibly look forward to. And unfortunately, we can't, which, yeah. you know, is kind of a drag because as Alan Watts puts it at the end of his lecture uh, on death, he says, there's no escape. Mm -hmm. There's no escape from, from subjectivity. The eye always recreates itself in all these different uh, places and times and, and types of sentience. And the fact that there's no escape from consciousness is, to me, 
I mean, that's a, you know, that's actually a little hard to deal with if you're looking forward to nothingness. <laughs> yeah, if, if you consider all the suffering wild animals go through, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, there's videos online of the things yeah. that happen in nature. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, no. Even if you yeah. compare the numbers, it's like so much more likely to be you know, a factory farm chicken somewhere in Russia than to be, you know, like a human being in the first world, for instance. You know, or even if you are a human being in the third world where, you know, people are starving to death, they don't have clean water and, some, and all of that. That's, that's not nice either. So it, it is quite scary. If I, if I could choose, I probably would take eternal oblivion, but yeah, well, it's yeah, not really I, a choice, is it? So, so gentlemen, do we want to then burden the world with, with this, this insight about <laughs> what to look forward to at death? That's a good question. I'd you say, know, for me personally, I'm I'm sort of interested in facts, and I think that in the long run, bringing facts to the surface usually serves a greater good. Um, yeah, maybe not temporarily. Maybe temporarily, people will be like really uncomfortable with it. But in the long run, it usually it's usually better to accept the truth than to you know keep spreading a lie. I'm with you, totally. Ted, what's your take? <laughs> um, well. Uh, we, we, it's already begun. Sam Harris has exposed the world to it and Alan Watts <laughs> has. And so there's really, and I believe others would, like I have in, uh, who is he, um, Stuart, um, you mentioned him on your website. He, right. Existential passage, he calls it. Yeah. Uh, eventually someone would come to this realization as well. And so, like I said, we might as well just dive into this and talk about it.